everyone and welcome to Let's Talk this afternoon. I'll be your host, Miriam Mwende. Um, exactly one month ago, on March 26th, President Uhuru declared a lockdown for five counties, Nairobi, Machakos, Kajado, Kiambu, and Nakuru. Today we have three Kenyans whose livelihoods were, have been adversely affected by this lockdown. Let's talk and lock our, our country, sorry. Lady and gentlemen, please introduce yourself. Ladies first. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Noni Mwangi. I'm a hospitality consultant and uh, I merge hospitality with entertainment. Happy to be here. Welcome. Uh -huh. Good afternoon. My name is Antonio Chieng. I'm the Chief Executive Officer to our Operator Society of Kenya. I'm happy to be here. Thank Very you. welcome. Last but not least, my name is DNG or Davidson Gibuini. Um, I'm a multi award winning uh, entertainer, multimedia personality. Uh, I'm a youth champion, I'm an activist, and I'm also the founder of Who's Your Leader Initiative, all about leadership and government. Glad to be here as well, Mayor. Brilliant. Thank you for coming, all of you. We'll start with you, DNG. Sure. Could you tell us, paint for us a picture of how your own livelihood has been affected by the lockdown? And you can go into the first lockdown and the second one. I think first and foremost, we need to start by saying that uh, locking down the country is a bad idea. Okay. It's, it's been a terrible decision that has had really drastic effects. Um, and the effects have been socioeconomical. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, socially, you know, we're unable to interact with one another. Yeah. You know, human beings are social creatures. Yeah. Trade is social. Nowadays, mm -hmm. they say your network is your net worth. Yes. Meaning that if I cannot meet Anthony and if I cannot meet Miriam or, or, or Noni, yeah. that, that means we cannot trade, we cannot transact. True. So socially, it's been a challenge. Even meeting family members, especially the older ones, uncles, aunties, parents, it's been a real challenge because everyone is afraid. Mm. You know, in fact, nowadays, uh, family meetings are on Zoom. Yes memorials for people who've passed on zoom mm -hmm. it, it's it's a real real problem apart from that the economic challenge i think is the worst because yes you can say i can call my mom i can call my dad i can call my auntie my uncle yeah. but economically how are we supposed to survive what happened is that as soon as the lockdown took place we've started feeling economic shocks so uh immediately uh, that announcement was, was made. Mm -hmm. um, employers sent their employees on, on leave, what we're calling indefinite unpaid leave. Yes. What that means is that uh, the person has decided, you know what, uh, panic mode, I cannot survive, let everybody go home so that my overheads uh, remain nil. So the person who sent home mm -hmm. subsequently cannot be able to afford to take care of their obligations, okay. their bills, taking care of their dependents from rent to hospital uh, bills to, to food to, sh you know, everything yeah. has become a challenge. Yeah. Uh, in our industry that, uh, f like for me as an entertainer, mm -hmm. it's a real crisis because there's no, there's no other way to eat, especially for those who had not divested into different uh, revenue streams mm -hmm. who are depending on, on, you know, being in the club, uh, doing an event, a launch, a concert, a party, a wedding, whatever it may be, there has been no source of income. Mm -hmm. and that is why we're telling the president a local country. Uh, we've seen people who are thriving yeah. now struggling to survive yeah. just because of one announcement. Mm -hmm. So uh, in my opinion, it's a very bad si si situation. And I think like these economic challenges are avoidable. Like we do not have to lock down the country to deal with a pandemic. If you look at mm -hmm. what WHO and the CDC are talking about in terms of uh, pandemic management, it's all about critical things one sanitize mm -hmm. wash your hands mm -hmm. with soap and water yeah. frequently mm -hmm. um, mask wearing yeah. social distance mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. let not somebody come and breathe in your face literally, yeah. literally. Mm -hmm. so if we implement that and enforce that where's the problem okay you understand and now we also have the vaccine now we have a vaccine mm -hmm. so that and, and and yet we have a vaccine that uh, is unavailable for kenyans mm. unless you have connections imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah phase one noni can you tell us about your industry how was it affected uh just like d i'm yeah. gonna start from the beginning mm -hmm. the decision to lock this country yeah. was careless and not thought through 
it was a very careless, impromptu, emotional or whatever decision. Okay. Why? When you lock down, it means you're giving yourself space to put in measures for when we reopen for yeah. business to go back to BAU, business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. However, what has happened instead is we have just locked and nothing, okay? Yeah. There's no increase in ICU beds. We still have 390 ICU beds in this country. And a shortage. Shortage because, I mean, look at the population versus yeah. the capacity. Mm -hmm. So the infrastructure for the Ministry of Health is not being pumped up mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. You're not seeing sanitizing stations being set up around the city, mm -hmm. nothing. There is no um, infrastructure build up in schools and colleges, nothing. You've not seen a program for public schools for children, uh, students, to get free masks when we reopen, nothing. There is nothing. There is no support. There is nothing being done to make this uh, a better situation to deal with when we finally reopen. So mm -hmm. I like giving this analogy. I find a rat in my house, okay? I lock the house because I'm like, I ain't living with no rat, <laughs> okay? okay? And I lock the house and yeah. I go because for two months, there's somewhere I can stay. Something ah. will be done with that rat. I don't know by who because it's me who locked, okay? Yeah. Two months later on May 29th, I go back home like, Phew, this rat has given birth now. So there are rats in my whole house. Some have died, yeah. so the stench is full, but now I have nowhere to go. Because by some miracle, I thought by locking down my house for two months, yeah. the solution will present itself. Privileged Kenya, working from home or still having their jobs, what they don't understand is this situation, it's all of us. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a term called the ripple effect yeah. that most times we like to ignore because we think we have shut down one industry in the capital city. Every capital city is run by entertainment, hospitality, and education. And mm -hmm. tourism. And tourism. Tourism <laughs> is, is everywhere. Yeah. We are not leaving you out, but... <laughs> okay, we are yeah. in this, all of us. Yes. But we've shut down that, not understanding the effect spread to the rest of the country. Yeah. So the capital and its environs are shut down. Yeah. We are choking the rest of the counties mm -hmm. outside of, of, uh, of the main capital. We've given uh, over... 250,000 people, yeah. uh, we've kicked them out of work, yeah. jobs that they do with dignity to support their families, and given them no solution whatsoever. Mm -hmm. The same people will have to go back to work, follow the measures, which will be the same measures put by MOH, because there's nothing different that mm -hmm. can be done. Okay. Hakuna doom that will spray mm -hmm. in yeah. the country and then, oh, corona is over. Mm -hmm. And now that effect, like, I'll give you an example for me because I need to answer your question. Yes, <laughs> circle back. <laughs> you see, in our, I'm a consultant, yes. so I have clients. I do recruitment, I do training, I do setup of restaurants, but mainly nightclubs, okay? okay? I've worked with almost everybody who is here now. Mm -hmm. Many of them shutting down because you can't, sustain deliveries from a nightclub. Yeah. What am I delivering? Mm -hmm. yeah. A slay queen as in <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> so they've shut down. So yeah. employees where on average you have about 15 to 20 employees in an establishment, yeah. those guys are at home. You can't afford to pay them. As consultants, you're shut down immediately. Yeah. Okay. In fact, when the announcement was being made, I was with my clients in Kitsisuru and you're just sitting there and you see a grown man hold his head like there was so much distress on his face because he's just invested in renovations, put um, all the measures to standard yeah. so that by the time we're going into deeper business, we're preparing for Easter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he's prepared. And then suddenly someone just comes and says, oh, we're going to close indefinitely. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, we stopped. I mean, we didn't earn for those contracts, those last two contracts. Don't forget last year, we had a little money. Then it dwindled off. Then mm -hmm. we got back to work. Mm -hmm. And for consultants during this era, they can tell you it's been very difficult. Yeah. So even just getting one client and note now the pays are coming like half mm -hmm. yeah. because you can't charge your usual rate. They yeah. can't afford it even. Yeah. So when you do that and then now it's cut off immediately, you are already working from a deficit from last year. So you can't casually come and tell somebody, just go into the savings. What savings, bro? Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, for you real, what savings? We are living where I get money today, I put it in the supermarket, I put it in my kid's mouth. Yeah. So there are times it is very difficult, yet there's no solution. And the one thing I won't accept from privileged Kenyans is saying, diversify your business. You diversify. Leave the bank and sell vegetables. Someone said that we should right. go and uh, try and look for events uh, outside of Nairobi. First, Nairobi is already locked down. Yes. Secondly, uh, the, even the pay outside of the main they can't city afford is even it. worse. All right. You understand? Club Let's get to Anthony yeah. first before we yes. get back there. Tell us about the tour operators. Are people traveling? Um, let me talk generally about tourism. Okay. Okay. As we speak, tourism is basically dead. 90% of tourism in this country is dead. Mm -hmm. If you lock down Nairobi, where majority of the domestic traveler travel to Mombasa and other parts of the country, it becomes very difficult mm -hmm. to drive the tourism agenda uh, uh, in this country. Mm -hmm. However, the inbound tourism in this country is still open, but we cannot compare what we are now getting with what we used to get before COVID. Can I ask him a question? All right, Maybe go ahead. Me. Go yeah. ahead. No, I was looking at the scenario in tourism. I saw that in, for, for, for regular Kenyans, domestic travelers, as you've said, um, the country was shut down, yes. right? Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. during Easter, yes. as she said. Yeah. Yet we, had, we saw the, the, the Minister of Tourism, Najib Balala, welcoming uh, tourists from Ukraine to Mombasa, even giving them handouts and, and, yeah. and uh, branded bags and kissing, literally kissing their feet. Yes. So my question is, and I ask this on my social media platforms, how is it that uh, the Kenyan president uh, stops Kenyans from traveling within their country but allows foreigners to travel into this country during COVID-19? So would we be able to see that scenario in Ukraine where the Ukraine, Ukrainian president uh, stops his citizens from traveling around Ukraine, but allows Kenyans, like the little nice black sheep we are, mm. to, to jet in and crisscross their beaches and get tans and, mm -hmm. and take selfies. Why are we so mean to ourselves? And why are we, you know, like going through that whole colonial mindset and, and slavery? All right. Thank you. Before, All right. before I answer, before I answer <laughs> yes. you, let me just continue to answer your okay. question. Okay. Yeah, so if I compare the first lockdown and the second lockdown, the first lockdown, at least the government tried to uh, cushion yes. the tourism and hospitality industry. Yeah. You remember um, the stimulus package which yes. was released to the hospitality sector, mm -hmm. the reduction in tax um, regime measures and many other things. But when you look at the lockdown, um, which was effected uh, just days before Easter, it had a, a very devastating effect. Yes to the tourism industry. Yeah. Number one, if I talk about Tour Operator Society of Kenya members, majority of them, number one, they've closed their offices. Mm -hmm. They've sent their staff home, okay? Mm -hmm. They cannot even afford, all right, to meet some of their basic obligations. Okay. We have a member with over 30 vehicles, land cruisers, not okay. even Kawaida tour vans, yeah. land cruisers, they're all parked. They are thinking of, uh, you know, uh, selling them off. So yeah. the situation is really, really, really dire. Back to your question, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the assumption is in the international market, the rate of the COVID-19 vaccination is far much better than in Kenya. By the time we were moving into the, um, the lockdown, the second lockdown, International destinations, they had already started implementing the vaccination. So the assumption has been whoever is coming into the country has been vaccinated. And whoever the supply chain within the tourism industry, the charter flights, the pilots and whatever, one way or the other, they have also been vaccinated. That is why I'm not defending the government here, but that is the assumption we have. That is why the international flights are allowed. They can fly to Mara mm -hmm. and to some extent if you seek approval you can do the road the road package. But in summary the situation is bad. 
for you mentioned a stimulus package for hospitality and entertainment. Did you benefit from that? No, no, no benefit. In fact, who, like, I'd like, do you know who benefited from it? Yes, I know. I know a few facilities who benefited. Like but hotels, I'm, 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 as yes, in you yes, oh, exactly. Okay. But I'm not right. going to mention here. I'm okay. not going to name names. Mm -hmm. But I know there are a few facilities who have benefited from the stimulus package. With that, I would really commend the government for releasing the stimulus package. However, yeah. the requirements were a bit stringent. The, the government really needed a lot of things, of which a common SME hospitality, you know, mm -hmm. entrepreneur would not have met. And yeah. isn't that the person who was to be cautioned by this stimulus package mm -hmm. you speak of? Exactly. That you commend the government so yes. highly of? Okay. Yes. Sorry, I'm not commenting. In, in, in <laughs> All right. Industry, if, if I may just respond to that. Yes. I hand over to you. Yes. In the industry, <laughs> in entertainment, was was very different. There was 100 million shillings uh, disbursed by the Ministry of uh, Culture and, uh, and Sports. Um, headed by Ambassador Amina Mohammed. So out of all that money, the only organization uh, within the government chain that we can see uh, disbursed any funds was the Kenya Film Commission. And how they did it was through grants uh, that were competitive. People were asked to apply and pitch. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the Kenya Film Commission actually tabled who uh, was awarded and how much money they were given. A a apart from that organization, everyone else from the PPMC, Permanent Presidential Music uh, Commission, etc., and all these other guys, the museums, Kenya Cultural Center, we do not know where the money went, who took the money. We had the money was given. Some, mm -hmm. I was in a group uh, on WhatsApp on Sunday where people were saying some artists were paid 3K, others 10K. We're like, which artists? There was an event. Which event? Okay. Where is the poster? When was it held? What was the criteria yeah. of artists being selected? So the Kenya government pretty much, in my opinion, is a big sham. You see, there's right. no accountability and because these funds are being given out, if you yes. say, as a Chimia stimulus Maji. for entertainment, Miriam for Shikawa. tourism. For it field. would be so easy yeah. to give an accountability yeah. report. And yeah. my issue, again, comes to us fellow Kenyans. Okay, why don't we demand accountability? It's so easy to, when we do budgets for our clients, everything has to be accounted for. Yes. So in this case, why are you saying one million dollars to you guys, one million dollars to mm. you guys, this and no, there is no accountability and no criteria, and we are still sitting pretty and tweeting and getting upset in our houses okay. for those of us who still have houses mm. All right. to go to. Um, viewers, we have not forgotten you. We can see your comments. Uh, on Facebook, Kevin Dong is saying, Lakini pia Pulse Live Kenya mmesa hau kuleta msewa michezo kwa panel because sports is also an, one area that has been affected. We've heard from our panelists today that Kenyans, wherever you are, they are the first ones to get the impact. It's coming to you. And Kevin is reiterating the same thing. Um, we also have happiness. Uh, to me, these uh, beautiful leaders are adding fake numbers of people for them to get help from outside. Corona is there, but this issue of extra numbers is affecting us. I'd like us to get into government. You have touched on it, each of you, when you were speaking, and you have pointed out the loopholes and the gaps that are there, especially in accountability. And my question is this. Do you think or ca do you have an, a suggestion of how it could have been handled better? If not lockdown, what do you think the government could have done to shelter your businesses and your livelihoods? We can start from DNG. Yeah, first and foremost, I think we just need to listen to the WHO and the CDC. Mm -hmm. Those are experts, man, who know exactly what they're doing. It's not the first pandemic they have dealt with. And they've told us, as I said in the beginning, mask up, social distance, sanitize, wash your hands. That's how to deal with the virus. Mm -hmm. You understand? It's yes. that simple. Yeah. Locking down a country is insane. It's, it's illogical, it's misguided. The worst thing is even now saying that Kenyans need to be home by 8 p.m. As if the COVID-19 virus has been given a brief that at, 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 at 8 is when you can operate, is when you can inf <laughs> infect guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, who came up with that? Like, what does that mean? Like, at, at 8 o'clock, uh, by guys being home by 8, that means there's, no there's not going to be any viral, viral transmission. 
-hmm. like based on what kind of science man? the 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 logic behind that the reasoning mm -hmm. that was given to us by the ministry of health was we are limiting interaction between people can i ask you a question miriam uh -huh. first how much interaction takes place in the in the in the markets well, have you been to yes. like uh, easy yes. markets you see how yeah. masks eh, right here mask in a value up yeah Look at the matatus. Say matatus in overload. Are yes, you aware? Yes. Look at the bus True. stops. We get photographs every every evening mm. of uh, guys who are waiting for matatus because there are not enough matatus. Yeah. So uko wapo kwanganya, unango jianganya. You know what I mean? We're we're squeezed. There's no social distancing. True. What about that? Mm -hmm. I think it's madness to just believe that the only place where people are transmitting COVID-19 is in a bar, mm -hmm. a, hotel, a hotel, a restaurant, a park. What yeah. insanity is that? Yes. In fact. If you look at the super spreader events, they were being charged by, by, by government. It was a, those were the BBI rallies that mm -hmm. were taking place across the country, mm -hmm. pro and anti BBI. Mm -hmm. So the politicians themselves, the president himself was on uh, one of his V8s without a mask talking to people. The, the head of state, <laughs> the head of state yes. himself. Look at uh, what was happening at State House the other day. The Maasai community elders went to visit the president. The president himself is the one who said that there should be no gatherings. Himself is the one who is doing a gathering straight from a DRC without even self-isolating. <laughs> what kind of president do we have? And what kind of government <laughs> is in charge of this country? Mm -hmm. Nani, could you... And what kind of people are allowing this to happen? Okay. I feel like it's us to question ourselves. All right. The people who voted, I didn't have options. Mm. So the ones who voted need to come back together and say, I think we made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because what I will never accept is the, the brutality, the police brutality mm -hmm. that is happening in this country in the name of COVID. Yes. I can't accept. There is no way, uh, you know, the, the, let me tell you how our economy works. If you've ever been to the CBD in the evening, that is the high traffic time. Yeah. So I might go to the market early in the morning then I go in Fuengua Mahali mm. somewhere, and mm. by 4 p.m. I need to be in the CBD because between 4 and 7 is my high selling time. Mm -hmm. Now, between 4 and 7, that is the time I need to think of how I'm going to get home, which is about 50 kilometers away, because that's where I can afford to live. But now, instead, my focus is, now, do I go to town to try make some money? Do I stay home and look at my children and starve? Do I wait to be evicted from my house? Because these houses we live in, those ones, you miss one day, mm. you find your stuff outside. Yes. And there's somebody already in your house like, sorry boss, yeah. you know, you snooze, you lose. Mm. But instead, like the matatus and the buses, why they have to overload is because the first night you have mothers begging the driver. Mm. Begging. Mm. So you're trying to say the solution is to put me in a Rongai minibus for three hours to avert COVID. Like sometimes I sit by myself and just ask, is it that we fell down as children and bumped our heads or what? How are we accepting brutal roadblocks okay. on a day the police force just woke up and said, 8 p.m. Watch out to Tesewa to Kenya. to Analawao. So you put up a roadblock, <laughs> in, uh, and if you check the traffic, and that's why uh, the, the anti-tweeters will say a revolution cannot start on Thika Road. Of course it can't, because 70% of the people in that traffic were families. You get? Mm -hmm. So how do we sit back and we are still accepting these things? A group of people stand with a barricade and say, y'all ain't going home mm -hmm. because it's past curfew. What have you achieved? Nothing. Okay, at this point, let me get back to our viewers and going by Noni's comments. Could you drop a comment and tell us what you have personally done to try and push the government to unlock our country? What have you done? I'd like to know. Yes, Anthony. Yeah. To you. Um, just to <coughs> refer to your latest question, mm -hmm. to the viewers, yes. what we have done as stakeholders in tourism stakeholders in this country, mm -hmm. 
We've lobbied the government to uh, roll out vaccinations, specifically to tourism and hospitality staff. Mm -hmm. That is ongoing. Yeah. It started last week. It was launched by Najib Balala, Najib Balala yes. the CS of tourism. Yes. And the government has promised 50,000 vaccines for okay. this particular industry. Mm -hmm. um, that is a good step because we are looking at vaccinating close to 2 million at the end of all these phases, then we can approach the government that, hey, look here, if you are considering locking down the economy again, mm -hmm. please do not disrupt tourism and hospitality because our guys are all vaccinated. That is one way of how we are trying to <coughs> engage the government. The other way is, mm -hmm. In future, we are requesting the government that before they come up with these stringent measures, yeah. there has to be some level of uh, discussions okay. between the tourism, hospitality sector mm -hmm. and the government so that we can reach a win-win situation mm -hmm. whereby the industry does not lose 100%. Yeah. So that's my take. But I, right. I, I want to comment on something Anthony has said. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, the drive for vaccination, for hospitality. Yeah. But I read this vaccination document when it was first released. Yeah. The vaccination focuses on, the vaccine, sorry, it focuses on what they call eligible individuals. Since Not one. everyone needs the vaccine. Yeah. Yes. So we are wasting 50,000 vaccine on young, strong people when eligible individuals still need the vaccine. That's one. Number two, remember, before we reopened last year in hospitality, mm -hmm. and I know because I had clients and we had to set up measures for it to be safe for the rest of the country and people in Nairobi to come to our establishments, we were given the guidelines by the Ministry of Health. We followed the guidelines. I don't know if you ever used to go eat out or to a restaurant. Your server, your bartender, your chefs, they always had the mask. Mm -hmm. They had Even the gloves. Yeah. Some had that uh, Robocop mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. on the face. Mm -hmm. So they did their part. On our side, we did our part. The sanitizer at, at, the, at the entrance, mm -hmm. the wash and basin at the entrance, guns. the whole of hospitality mm -hmm. said you want us to do this we will do it mm -hmm. so why were we shut down we didn't do mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. okay we said super <coughs> spreaders were political rallies right yes those masses of people mm -hmm. we know where they come from why yeah. haven't we heard of vicious outbreaks of covid in those areas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so for me i get a bit confused when okay. we say we're doing a drive of fifty thousand vaccines for hospitality. Why? Take it to the eligible individuals who need the vaccine. All right. Let's go to, to the comments. Thank you, Noni, for, for that. You seem to have so many fans. Dago Diambo says, Noni Mwangi, you're killing it. Great points. We really must have bumped our heads as kids. <laughs> he agrees with you. John Keen is also saying, Noni Mwangi, what's up? What's <laughs> up? <laughs> Um, yeah, DNG, you also have some fans. Uh, Eric Jufantia, no masana DNG. Mwema Captain is saying it is easier said than done. Mwema, would you tell us what you have done, um, what you have said that is easier than been done? Um, uh, who else? Who else? Wairo J, this lockdown seems more political than logical. How do you limit the physical curfew and economical curfew and lockdown potential of your own people and increase taxes haphazardly without any cushioning? Yet you expect these people to pay their bills, feed their families and survive. That's why Ro, why Ro we are getting you here. Uh, 60 million Kenyans cannot be held hostage by one individual. And from there, I'd like to ask you the next question. Um, Anthony, you've told us that you're, in, you're engaging the government in discussions. Do you think they're listening? Do you think the president is listening to all of us, all of you who are calling for the country to be unlocked? Of course he's listening. The president is fully aware of what is happening in this country. Uh, we have had the Ministry of Interior begging for a meeting. Mm -hmm. with our team. We've declined to, to participate in such charades. Wow. In fact, I was in a shock to see a 
uh, some of our colleagues in the industry going to meet the deputy president, mm -hmm. second in command of the same government that has locked us down, mm -hmm. um, begging to be... What is he supposed to do? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is he supposed informing? to say, you know what, we are opening tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for coming. He released a statement and said, we have heard you mm -hmm. and we have taken down your suggestions. You see, the, the deputy <laughs> That's president what he did. is also on record talking about that he, the fact that he's been alienated by government mm -hmm. and that he has no power. Mm -hmm. That was on a Citizen TV interview with Linus Kakai. Go, go, go watch that. Yeah. Uh, so if somebody has no power to do anything in government, why are we going to sit with him in, in the scorching sun and, and take fo photographs? Unless it's... You know, this is nonsense. The president is fully aware. The problem is we have a president who only thinks about himself. We have a president who's all about his big fat ego. We have a president who only is using uh, uh, this uh, lockdown to flex his muscle. Why? Because BBI was being overrun by Tanga Tanga. We all know that. BBI was not going to pass. So now he's using it to stop these guys from campaigning against him. Mm -hmm. Right? It's political. Somebody has just said that in your comments. Yeah, it's not right? It's political. Mm -hmm. Let us not kid anybody. It's an excuse where now they, we can deploy the police, militarize the state, and mm -hmm. control everything. Even when we were doing our press conference, we had National Intelligence Service officers mm. at our press conference. We were four of us. Why do we need an NIS? Okay. They, they brought the Kenya police from uh, Parkland's police yes. station. Well, All right? Okay. We, they even brought uh, a dog. Dogs. Umbua. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. That's a military mm -hmm. state. That's a, a, a government that knows it's doing the wrong thing. And the entire country can see that this a lockdown is the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. That in, the entire country is saying, and look our country. Yeah. But the president sits on his high horse and goes to DRC. <laughs> Noni, what do you think? Is he listening? <laughs> yeah. wah. Wah, wah, wah. You know, I'm a patriot. That's my problem. I love this country. I have refused to leave this country from when I was in campus. We had guys going to San Diego. I said, no, I ride or die with my city. I ride or die with my country until now. Because, you know, like even in management, mm. if one of my staff does something and then I say, I didn't know, mm. or what do you want me to do? The buck stops with me. The buck stops with the president, but he choose. we are his people. We put him there. Mm. This is not a favor. Yeah. We have to know, we demand, we, we deserve mm. accountability. We deserve the president to come and talk to the people, not to say, even me, I don't know. So mm. who knows? Who are we supposed to cry to? And you're trying to tell me that in shelter, because the Kenyans on Twitter, they like to say that the president is sheltered because mm. he's not on Twitter, he mm. doesn't know. Mm. Is there a president who doesn't know what's happening in his country? <laughs> is there? I, I, that would be Negligence. a shocker. Yeah. Are you saying then mm. there are things which can happen to us in this country and the president won't know? Why won't he know? Mm. The president gets a brief every day, mm. every hour. Mm -hmm. You know, they know the terrorist threats, they know all the threats. Mm. You know, they know the underground rambling coming from the people. Yeah. Unlock our country, what it did was open Pandora's box. Mm. Now you've given Kenyans time. So what Kenyans are doing is checking now everything. They mm. want to chamboa every, every element of governance, which is bad governance. Yeah. And that is why for me, I stand here because sitting back and saying mm. this is how it is what shall we do let's pray for the best pray for what okay anthony you've you've engaged with the government and a, a, a body that is recognized that is legitimate do you think the president has listened to you for the tourism industry um i think he's listening mm -hmm. even as we speak i believe there are operators that are listening to us mm -hmm. We are continuing to push, and I believe they will listen. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Going back to our comment section, it's hitting up for, 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 for us out there. Happiness Lazarus says, some of our leaders even use this disease to enrich themselves, leaving other fellow Kenyans with tears. But only God will judge. Happiness Noni is saying we can also do something about it. Um, 
yeah that's that's it for for now remember you can also call in through our numbers they've been provided in the comment section um let's go into unlock our country the initiative could you tell us how that began what is the agenda and how far you, you you've come okay yes so um when i started this i was just your usual frustrated Kenyan mm. who has anxiety, who has severe insomnia. So battling, trying to sleep, trying to get rest so you can even think, but you wake up with so much uncertainty. Mm. That particular morning, I couldn't take it anymore. So this just started just as an act of expressing the frustration, mm. created this on Canva and put it up on Instagram and tagged a few guys, Gabu, Fresh, I think, Calligraph, Edgar Obari. I tagged a few people. Mm. I think Gabu now took the initiative, started a group, and appointed me as chair. Okay. Now, unlock our country. The goal is for us to go back to work. You mm. see, all these other things which have been unearthed, okay, like me, I got like proper government education in the last three weeks, mm. even Twitter. Twitter, okay. I came on Twitter with this movement. Mm. And for me, I just sit and I say, all we want is the opportunity to go back to work and provide for our families with dignity. You see, a lot of times you'll hear people saying, those guys who work in those bars. Mm. Yeah, that's us. We are the ones who work in those bars. We have families. Mm. We have people who depend on us. We have an ecosystem that is supported by our business. So Unlock Our Country is so straightforward. <clears throat> We said abolish curfew unless we are given medical reasons, scientific proof that curfew helps to stop corona or the spread of corona. Mm. And we want the lockdown lifted without discussion. Yeah. People can travel around. Mm. We're adults. If you're supposed to wear a mask, then you'll wear a mask. Mm. If I find you without a mask, I'll give you a mask. Mm. I won't beat you down to the ground. Mm. How have I helped you? when I beat you up, handcuff you, and take you to a police station. So the cops have made this their income stream. Mm. This is the income solution for the police force. I can easily tell you I have no budget for you guys, but hapa kuna budget. Mm. So the cops come out, they make their money, that's how they're sustaining themselves. Yeah. Okay. But if you're coming to tell me logically that this whole lockdown is for our good, then you lock down the whole city. Mm. Why are you working and I can't work? Mm. And soon, no one is going to work. Yeah. If, if it means we all stay home mm. so that this, you say co commercial, flatten. Yeah, yeah. flatten the curve, mm. then let's all stay home. And if you find it hard to stay home, we'll help you. All right. DNG, yeah. how is it going so far? Awesome. Mm. I love it. You know, from the first day, as, as she has mentioned, we were at 51,000 tweets, organic. This is not a sponsored movement. Mm. We have no donor, no backer, nothing. Mm. It is just ordinary Kenyans. I like somebody who said earlier that uh, where the other industries represented sports, mm. etc. We have actually, a local country is not just about entertainment or hotel or tourism. Mm. It's the entire country, really. Mm. It's the entire population of, of people who have been grossly affected by this illogical, illegal, and misguided lockdown yeah. so if you feel if you're in narok and you are a guy of boda boda and any akuna bees mm. and local country you, you you're part of this movement yeah you guys who are saying what about transport what about aviation what about what about so it's it, it's it's a movement for all kenyans mm. by kenyans right, right. and it, it's a mouthpiece it's given us an opportunity to talk to one another mm. of course social media being a, an ex, a, a very great uh, expression uh, platform where you know, you can you can tweet somebody in another in another country, in mm. another county, in another city, you know, and it's a conversation. So we're learning from each other. Mm -hmm. We're having people contributing, like you're having with the comments, people mm -hmm. giving ideas, and that's what has been informing our, our conversations. Right. And 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 for us, it's to say that we want to earn. We know that Kenya has no welfare mm. apart from the welfare for the old people over yeah. seventy, where they're given. 2,000 shillings a month, mm. and the one for uh, persons with disability, yeah. where they're given 2,000 shillings a month. Apart from uh, that, there is no other welfare. You know, mm. in, in these are the states where lockdowns have been happening. Mm. Food has even been delivered to, to houses. Yeah. Chakula, yeah. mamboga, manyanya, kitungu, nini. Mm. It's brought. In China, even in Wuhan, mm. they were giving food through robots. Did you see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yes. It's like the government locks down but takes care and protects its citizens. Yeah. In Kenya, the government locks down, eats the Kemsa money, 
eats the vaccines. It, like know, we've eaten oh my God. everything, like, okay? Like, Everything has mm. been consumed. It's a gangster If you look at Kenya. the money that we have received for COVID, mm. you would think one of these malls which is crashing down would be converted to a high-level ICU center. Mm. No. Mm. Acha, no. Even the Minister of Health is on record on television telling us Tafadalini let any cylinders of oxygen. Mm. How, how mad is this, is this government? You know, from the top to the bottom, everyone is confused. Na kama wajui kazi, and then nyumbani, and then Nyumbani Mapema just resign. We are calling the president diversify. to please resign. <laughs> and Nyumbani, yeah. Uru Kinyata Ukishindu wa Naikazi, and Nyumbani. Usingoje 2022, and Nyumbani Leo. Let us have a quick election, and let somebody else who is competent enough, who can think who about, cares about who Kenyans. cares about servant leadership mm. yeah. to come to yeah. into power. We are ready. We are ready today to go to the ballot. We are ready. Uru Tafadhali. Vunja ya serikali yako na wende, wende home. Urelax. Right. Stop all this Stop pressure. All right. You know, we, we, to, we want to go to work. Because yeah. without us going to work, where are we going to work? We are not thieves. We don't do wash, wash. Mm. Atu vanangi kuhuza sijui gold fake tume, tumechukua kamawe, tumepaka mm -hmm. paka gold at isa ogoro, nini, cheki. Atu vanangi kazi ya wizi ban. Mm. We are legitimate business people, yeah. entrepreneurs, hustlers, tunajitafutia. Atuja kuja hapa kuomba omba pesa. And, we, and there's something D said at our presser. Okay. You see, we are very innovating. This industry is extremely innovative. Mm. This same young people came together and said, okay, we have all these restrictions. What can we do? Mm. So we have events like, I think, Park and Chill. But it's just the way you go to an open space, your cars are social distance, I guess. Because mm. based on how you park, there's music coming from over there. Mm. Everyone is at peace. Mm. But the government sees a young person trying to thrive, quash it. Mm. So that was quashed. That was killed. That w everything we try mm. was shot down. Mm. So now we sit back and say, you won't feed us. You won't let us work. You tell us to diversify. You go and talk to these corporates about jobs. They are downsizing. Because what we are refusing to accept is our dependency on tourism and hospitality as a country. This is a destination country. Mm. So how do we sit back, shut that down, and think it's not going to affect everybody? Uber, supermarket at the store, malls are shut. A whole mall is being sold. Mm. A mall, like a house, a mall as a package mm. is being sold to the highest buyer. Mm. Okay? Yeah. If we're not sitting down and seeing the MD of Pride Group is sitting in his mm. office like, what are we going to do? Mm. Okay? People are not speaking. The associations that are registered, even as we have them, we have Perak, we have Nairobi Bar Association. Mm. They have also spoken to the government. Mm. Yeah. Still nothing, nothing happening. You can't keep talking and talking and t I keep telling you I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry, give me something to eat. Eventually, I'll just come to your house, take some food and bounce. Mm. Mm. Because I'm talking and you're hearing me, mm. but still doing nothing. Mm. How do you not hear the cries of your people? Their blood is in the soil. How do you sit over there and eat? How do you sleep mm. at night? And you know, people okay. are body shaming the president, eh? which is not cool, by the way, to body mm. shame somebody. But you know... <laughs> The, the, the back story is what I think got Kenyans really angry. Mm. That during a lockdown, during such a crazy period where there is no income, poverty is at an all-time mm -hmm. high, job creation nil. The president, mm. and mm. Now, you know, I do not support body shaming, mm. but there is a point there. Mm. That how is it that this guy is thriving, yeah. but the rest of the country is on lockdown? Mm. Mm. That's a big fat shame. And his PR yeah. team... They're not doing any work. President should have us to do his PR. They are not doing anything mm. right now. The kind of press this guy gets is so negative. Yeah. And you see, because we are angry, we have spread this information to the rest of the world. Mm. Yani, tunapigana in yeah. mm. estate. Everyone yeah. can see us fighting. Mm. This, this couple of the president and the people of Kenya. We have aired our laundry to the rest of the world. When you start people start floating recolonization ideas. Mm. Imagine, imagine a president about to retire because he will retire, will not accept extension of his term. 
kuna kipindi na tembea kama hiyo hiyo follow follow ati nini tutabadilisha constitution nini mm. ah hiyo tutaingia uwanjani tupigane mm -hmm. Kenya is Kenya are ready by the way right. mark my words but i'm no proponent of violence but we need to understand that somebody is about to retire after mm. after two terms that's going to be 10 years yeah. with no legacy we'll remember uhuru for what lockdown mm. na loans and memes and memes now is zile wizi zilikuwa kwa ile jibu that is what mm. we're going to remember the head of state yeah compare with kibaki okay eh? we hear you let me go to the comment section jeffrey al shoni says well said they should stop blame games and unlock our country and extend curfew hours how or, or reduce curfew hours i think is what he meant and citizens to follow covid protocols lakini hii kukasia wananchi na kukazia wananchi na uchumi okay yeah i've lost the, the rest of what he has said but we he's still calling for unlock our country francis muema says well spoken panelists but as noni says it's back to our voting uh, Carol Mtambua says, DNG, keep it up. John King says, as much as it is an emotive topic, we need to be logical, both citizens and GOK. Maybe, King, you could elaborate on that. Uh, Mwema Captain, we are not ready to fight. That's what he says. Apinda Kenneth says, candidly, our country should be unlocked. Citizens to go with covid protocols i think we we can get from even our comment section that everyone agrees we are all suffering from this uh lockdown and it needs to be lifted and that's the call we are hearing for our panelists as we conclude yeah. could you each one of you tell us your parting shots yeah um from the tourism angle mm. and hospitality yes. so we have a consultant here yeah what I can urge the public is uh, um, just adhere to the containment measures, um, wear your mask, um, sanitize, keep safe distance. I mean, this country is ours. We don't want to fight because if we fight, um, the entire sector and the economy will collapse. But let us just adhere to the containment measures. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Noni. Uh, well, I heard Moema said we are not ready to fight. Now, my, anal my analogy is this way. You can die on your feet or you can die on your knees. So if you're not ready to fight, then you die on your knees. You die, you're hungry, you're suffering, you're struggling. But you want freedom for your country. You're a free citizen. This, this is not a dictatorship, this country. This is a democratic country. We, we have a democratic government. We voted in our leaders. So you choose to demand of your leaders what you deserve as a Kenyan. And if you sit back and do nothing, then do not complain about this government. Mm. Thank you, Noni. I'd also like to re remind citizens who are saying that we're not ready to fight. We have the right to petition. We have the right to picket. We have the right to assemble. We have the right to, to come together and complain to our government. Mm. It's enshrined in our constitution, mm. Mm. OK? And, and what we are saying is, we've seen other countries that have spiraled into violence. We have many examples from our continent, from Senegal mm. to, to Tunisia, Egypt, Sudan, where they actually went and took the guy from his digs, mm. the head of state, with the army. Yeah. Like they were tired. Okay? We've mm -hmm. seen a lot of examples, man. I can keep going on. Nigeria, mm. with the SARS movement, all right? Mm. We don't want our country to get to that point where... It's chaos. it's chaos and mm. anarchy and violence and bloodshed. Mm. But if the government does not respond, mm. if the government does not unlock our country, where are we going to go? Mm. Isn't it going to head into violence? Yeah. Because surely we're not going to sit at home and say it's cool. We're getting and we're not eating anything. We're mm. hungry and it's cool. Mm. The toy in the house is crying sick. There's no money for medicine. At because we're patriotic and we don't like to fight. Iko to sawa uru. Ibeni tu apana itaribika as it has become in other countries. Even in Uganda, we've seen mm. uh, citizens taking to the streets. Okay? Yeah. So let our government, let our government think, visualize, look at what uh, uh, is happening around yeah. and respond effectively. Waso hili na wahenga walisema ni kimalizia. Ukiona kichwa cha mwenzako kimenolewa, chako. 
kitie maji. All right. And DNG, because you, you've concluded for us, I, I have to ask this one last question. Because sure. we've known you as an entertainer, we've seen you transitioned into so many other things. Does this mean you're looking to join politics? I'm already, I hope he is. I'm already <laughs> in politics. I hope he is. Uh -huh. I'm doing his campaign. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. see, one, one thing I tell everybody, and I've been asked this question everywhere I go, mm -hmm. people think that Politics is only when you're a president or a governor or an MP or an MC or a woman rep or whatever. No, no, no. Mm. Politics is concerned about everything. Mm -hmm. Politics is the art of governance. Yeah. How we're being governed is, is bad. Mm -hmm. so therefore, when we talk about bad governance, poor leadership, ineffective mm. uh, legislation and, and presidential directives, mm -hmm. we're already in politics. Yeah. So, yes, I'm already in politics actively. Wow. All right? Wow. My initiative, who's your leader, is about leadership and governance. We're talking about... Uh, we want good leadership, servant leadership, and good governance. That is all we're asking for. Watutaki viongozi ambao hawajali wanainchi. Thank you very, very much. Mm. So you, Dani. Wow. <laughs> and you had it first on Pulse Live Kenya. Thank you for tuning in this afternoon. Thank you to all our panelists. And the message is, let's unlock our country. Thank you. Thank you.